Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Uh, how are you? All of you, alhamdulillah, are okay? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So no one answer, just writing for me. Okay, good, good group. So negative. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to share the screen with you. For the lecture, I send it to you, but uh, I didn't want all the lecture to be included in you, so just a part of it, but I keep it with you, just uh, for your knowledge of some. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. 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 Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, this is a good news. Uh, so let us start by Umm uh, Al-Kitab. A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rabbim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am trying to make it to make it full screen. Okay, so let us uh, start by an important uh, uh, knowledge in this uh, introduction photo. You can see the very low birth weight, okay, or extreme preterm, which is booted in plastic bag. Why we put him in plastic bag and we intubate him because of hypothermia and hypoglycemia, okay? This one, cannot go ahead and, uh, and offer him uh, feeding directly because most of them are not uh, mature enough even for their stomach. And they are susceptible for many complications like feeding intolerance and like uh, NEC, which is necrotizing enterocolites. That's why if we start by formula for this baby, they are very in, in, in the dangerous. So we prefer to start only by EBM, expressed the breast milk by very small amount, even from the first day, but it is just like one ML, known as trophic feeding. Okay, the upper one is speaking about part of Quran, ayah, which is said, It means Allah advise any, any mother, to feed her baby up to two years, okay? Uh, so let us today go about the uh, nutrition and electrolytes. We are calling it FIN. FIN means the fluid and uh, nutrition, okay? You see, this is from latest edition of Nelson. 
which is 21 edition. And I'm advising you, inshallah, uh, don't go through all the edition because it is available. You must do your best to bring the latest edition because books are changed really every five years. There is a big part of it already changing. Okay. We must start the assessment of the fetal growth and the development intrauterine. And this job is done now by uh, ONG team very nicely. Okay, we, they are checking for us the somatic, I mean, the weight and the growth and the height, the neurological, is there any abnormality about behavior even of the baby? He can listen to his mother voice, he can like that. And the uh, psychological change in parents, and is there any threats that can affect the growth and the development like maternal disease, undernutrition, hypertension, thyroid problem like that. In the first year, from delivery until the first year, uh, the prenatal period, uh, okay, until the first year of life provide the platform for remarkable growth and development. So it is very important from time of conceive until the first year, it is a very, very important start, okay? It includes most of the child got neuronal growth. Do you know the head circumference? Anyone knows how is the size of the head circumference upon birth? Mm. It is in the second uh, slide, I sent it to you the slides before. So the baby will deliver at 35 centimeter. In the middle, of course, there is calculation for that. At 47, uh, at one year, he will become 47. Okay. What about us as an adult from 55 to 58? So you can remember now how is the brain growth because the skull is affected by the, the growth of the brain. So the brain will grow from 35 to 47 and the remaining uh, uh, seven to 10 is for the remaining life. So take care about that please. The, and we have a, something known as neuronal plasticity. Plasticity is the ability of the brain to be shaped by the experience, both in positive and the negative, okay? Total brain volume is double in the first year of life and increased by an additional 15% over at age of one month. Is approximately, at the age of one month, is approximately 36 of the adult volume, but approximately 72% or 83 by two years. That's why the brain growth itself are very important. So you're, if you are giving the child a good nutrition, you are helping him to grow, not only as a physical, but his brain. You are building his future. Uh, this is the rule of thumb, most of the baby uh, will lose weight in the first week of life, okay? They lose about five to 10%. Even the preterm can lose up to 15%. This is very important to, to consider it. Most of the baby will deliver edematous and they void urine and lose weight. And after that, they start. But if it is more, well, uh, volume loss, you must be cautious because the blood pressure can be affected, okay? Even the serum bilirubin can be elevated. So it's very important. They will regain their birth weight around one week or 10 days, okay? So suppose the baby is delivered between three and 3.5, will lose weight and then he will come around one week to his weight and he is doubled by four months. So if it's 3.5, he will be up around seven by four months. At one year, he will be triple. So he will be around 10 years. Quadruple, around four years. So it is very important to know how much this baby needs. Someone needs to double 
Suppose anyone need to build the weight, he can build the weight in four months. It's very difficult to, to be double, cannot, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this opportunity to the child. Even his height, most of the children are delivered by 50 centimeter. At one year, they are 75. So for the weight, he built 100%. For the height, he built 50% extra. Head circumference increase from 35 to 47 in one year. That's why starting a good nutrition for the newly arrived baby is your job, babies. It will affect his ability for the future, inshallah. Just to remember you about the, the total body water. Okay, if we start from the extreme, Return it is different from the adult. Adult, we have around 60%. The full term, okay, 70%. Okay, you see now, 70%, but also divided as 35% as intracellular and 40% is extracellular. That's why the baby, if affected his fluid, he can go severe hypotension rapidly because the intravascular volume will be shrinkage rapidly. The preterm has 90% total body water. And that you can see the intracellular is 30% and the extracellular is 60%. This gives you an important issue. Most of the small baby, most of their baby are water. So if they became dehydrated, and the dehydration doesn't mean I lose water only, but I lose water and electrolytes. It will affect the sodium, it will affect the potassium, it will, and some of these are considered life-threatening cases. How is the child that can lose water? It is either sensible or insensible one. Sensible are easily measured, but the insensible one is not really measurable. That's why we must take, especially if the baby is preterm, okay? How is the maturity of the skin? How is the humidity? When you, when you come to our in ICU, we see that the baby is put it inside incubator, not enough. We are increasing the humidity up to 75 or 80 for the extreme preterm to decrease the loss of water. Also about the renal function test, you must know that the capacity of the renal function is not like the adults. You must remember this FENA, FENA, which is the fractional excretion of sodium. In adult, it must be less than 1%. If you find the FINA is high, you must be afraid that this child has a problem with the kidney, is going to be impairment like that. The term infant, also less than one. But what, what about the preterm? His FINA, his loss of sodium, about five to 6%. That's why most of this child, if you are not supplementing them by sodium, they will get hypo, Natremia. And you must know the number. How is the normal for sodium in the blood? When I said if it is 135 to 145, so if it's less than that, up to 130, it is mild. From 130 to 120, it is moderate. Less than 120, it will be severe. And we must intervene because if the child got I go natremia, which is considerable moderate to severe. Sometimes he started to convulse. If he has trouble with the potassium, you know that it will affect the heart arrhythmia. That it is very dangerous. Hypokalemia and hyperkalemia consider a medical emergency. How can I assess the fluid status? Any time, please, you know, you are not medical student. You are going soon to be a doctor. You are going soon to practice. Any 
issue come to you, you must ask yourself, I must go through the normal flow. What is the normal flow? I will ask, I start by the history and then clinical examination and then investigation. Don't jump. Because if you are building, as we teach you for the previous 100 plus days, uh, 1000 plus days, you know that every case we must start by the history, which is oriented me and it is targeted history. I need to check the important point which can guide me for diagnosis, for differential diagnosis or emergency intervene and then go for clinical and go for investigation. Don't invert the pyramid beliefs. So we must go even for the maternal history, which will be affected uh, about her sepsis, about her hydration, about neonatal history. Okay, is there any hypoxemia? Because if the patient to got birth asphyxia, as you know, it can cause multiple organ impairment or failure. Okay, it can affect the kidney, it can affect the brain, it can affect the heart, it can affect the circulation. Uh, so it is very important. And then go for clinical evaluation. Okay, the most important, if you come to the in the ICU, you will find a very big chart, uh, which is uh, managing how is the weight and how he is gaining weight. What about the UOP? urine output, what about the PO, what about uh, other the humidity, the phototherapy, which is sometimes you need to add extra fluid, especially if it is not lead-like. Lead what about his ventilation setting? Okay, how is the capillary refill time? And then I'm going to consider blood urea serum electrolytes. Okay, with the vital sign, it will guide me for that step. So for the first month, which is the new need, your job are not simple one. It is, uh, it is the stone which you are going to build the future of anything. Okay, so the nutritional requirement, which are very important, it must contain all this. I mean, it must contain carbohydrates and fats and the protein, of course, water, mineral and trace element and the vitamins. It is clear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to us if we have a balanced diet. And the breast milk is the best, in spite we sometimes we need to add some extra, okay? And we must calculate the energy requirement. So it is not enough to contain all this but we must check how is the energy requirement for every child. This energy requirement depend, dependent on the gestational age and postnatal age, how old he is post delivery. What is the weight of the child? How he is getting his nutrition? Is it IV? Is it uh, total parenteral nutrition? Is it IV fluid? Is it oral? Is it OGT tube like that? Okay, how is the growth rate? And how he is active? Because activity, it will consume a big bulk of the calories, okay? What about the thermal environment? That's why if a small baby, you must put him inside incubator, not to lose temperature, because the baby can be affected by the temperature around, okay? He has any medical problem also, we must go to all this to define uh, how much is the energy is required. Ideally, energy from uh, up to 50 from uh, carbohydrates, about 40 to 50, 50 from lipid, and the protein, which is 7 to 16. So you must know that this is the base. Of course, we need to to consider as a component if it is uh, intravenous or TBN. So generally, if we start by the baby, newborn baby, he needs about 100 to 120 kilocalorie per kilogram per day for growth. Again, so how he needs how much? 100 to 
120. The term usually need around 100. The preterm need 120, sometimes more. But most important to understand how is this energy requirement would be used by the body. Around 50 to 60 kilocalories from this, it needed to maintain the weight and the vital sign, the function of the body. The remaining will be for growth. We need more energy, but no more volume. This is an important sometimes because especially a very small baby, if you offer him increased volume of fluid, it will open the ductus arteriosus. You know this ductus arteriosus, which is the connection between the aorta and the pulmonary, which is present in the right line. Sometimes if you give extra fluid, it will open the ductus arteriosus. So sometimes you need to give high energy with less volume. You see, this is just, I am telling you, if you have a healthy enteral feeding, I mean by mouse, premature, and you are giving him 125 kilocalories. So he's resting energy, energy, he needs 50 kilocalories. If the activity level needs five, his occasional cold stress, because cold stress and the hypoglycemia, are two factors which are very dangerous for the breather. You need at least 10 kilocalories. Stool, it, you can lose about 15 kilocalories with the voiding stool, okay? So what is the remaining? Very small amounts. It may be four to five kilocalories for the gross, okay? That's why if the patient doesn't got enough milk, he will not grow. He is, looks healthy and functioning, but he is not growing. And that is the issue. The mother doesn't get enough breast milk, or even she is not giving any supplementary. It is very dangerous. How can I give nutrition to the new baby? It is either intral, okay, by mouse. Of course, the best or the breast is the best, but if needed, we can give him by another message. Or sometimes, if the baby cannot suck, especially if preterm or has insult on the brain, if you are trying to stimulate him to suck, he cannot. We are bringing for him the occupational therapy to try to teach him how to start to suck and swallow. Because to feed, you need three things. Remember it, please. You need to make sure that the child are able to suck and able to swallow and able to coordinate. If the baby cannot coordinate, is able to suck and swallow, but his ability to control or coordinate is not high, he will get aspiration pneumonia, which are very important. So at this, if you have any query, just put OGT tube or NG tube, okay? And give the feeding through it. If the patient has chronic tube feeding, sometimes you are making a very simple technique endoscopic. We are just through one suture in the abdomen and put the catheter inside the stomach, okay? Which is very, Straightforward with this GTO feed. If the baby need for a few months like that, it is easy to put it and to put the feeding there. If this is the patient is get enteral. So enteral can be oral, bare gavage, or GTO. If not, we are going for parenteral nutrition, known as TBN, total parenteral nutrition. And this total parenteral nutrition can be also either peripheral line or central line. I mean, she, he needs percutaneous or central line. If the osmolarity is high, especially exceeding 900 or 1,000 uh, micromole, or the dextrose is more than 
12.5 or 12.5 and the more you cannot put it peripheral. That's why to give parenteral nutrition, you need a lot of preparation. Sometimes we have combination between both. <clears throat> I mean, child can tolerate small amount of feeding. He need 100 ml, uh, 180 ml per kilo. He can suck only 50. So I will give him 130 of TBN. So it can be combination. For the enteral feeding, we must know that breast feeding is the best. And we must, and in every hospital, we must, we must have someone who can counsel the family antipartum during the delivery and postpartum. And we are in SASMIC, we are baby friendly hospital. So we are trying to make all situation, make sure that the breast feed is going in correct way. If we have a problem, we also we came for the express the breast milk. And remember that, alhamdulillah, we are considered maybe the only or the first uh, one place on the, in the, in the, I don't know, in the world maybe, to have uh, human milk bank. We are planning for that. So you can, there is donation according to Sharia. I mean, the mother will drop her milk and the one who needs, he must meet the mother and know who is mother in lactation, like that. So they are restricted it and they put a very nice regulation for that. If not, sometimes we need to come to formula. Okay, we have a formula term which contain about 20 kilocalorie uh, per ounce, okay. Uh, we have late preterm or transitional one, which has slightly increased. And we have preterm, which is 24. Sometimes you have a special even, which you can give up to 30 kilocalorie per ounce. Okay. Uh, or we can add the normal formula uh, or express the breast milk. We can add supplementary calories you through HFM. What is HFM? Human milk fortifier. It is a small sachet. You will be add one sachet over 25 to 50 ml. It will give him extra protein, calcium, and like that. So now we know breast milk either lactation or expressed, we have formula, which can be term or late term or preterm, and we have another formula, divide division of the formula, which is a normal one or hydrolyzed formula like nucate and like that, if the baby cannot tolerate the normal milk. You need to read this, please. It is very important the advantage of the breast milk, and you must be able to counsel the family, okay? What is the advantages of breastfeeding to the mother? What is the advantages of breastfeeding to the infant? Even what, what is the advantages of breastfeeding to the community? It is Sheba. It can save some community uh, finance. It will give more health. It will give a good of social bond between the mother who is insist to, to give uh, her baby breastfeed or the other one who just give him bottle and, and leave him. No, it is very important even for the social situation. Sorry. Can you give me it may be uh, for 30 like that or before that? Okay, okay, bye. okay, okay. I will try to see. Okay, bye. Okay, so we can uh, uh, we must know this what is the advantages of breast milk to the mother, to the baby, to the community, 
And why breast milk is the best? And this is one of your job, please. Okay. Uh, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, we used to tell the patient, uh, the, the community there, because they have a lot of uh, cows and camels and uh, goats. And we said, tell them that the goat or the cow milk is for the cow. And the human milk is for human bellies. Don't use it until there is a need. And really, yes, if you read about that, it is, it is not only nutrition, it is treatment. If you give the patient uh, even the EBM, the cholesterol, which is a few drops, which in the few days of life are very, very important. We will read about that and you must revise the lecture for that. Okay, even if you are giving the breast milk for a very small amount, it is uh, immune protective effect. It protects the premature infant against sepsis, against necrotizing enterocolitis, and even the, the death. Death rate are less if like that, okay? Other advantages also, it provide link between the baby and the mother. It will protect against infection and the death. It will protect against UTI and the NEC. It is better to be tolerated. It is known that breast milk is tolerated unless the patient has some disease like galactosemia or like that. And it is short in the hospital stay. They found that if you start the breast feed, the, or breast milk, even if the baby cannot feed, even through the vagina, the stay in the hospital will be less. It will improve the neurodevelopmental outcome of the brain and the eyes. All this, it is not just, it is not just like I am comparing it between Nasi Cocos and uh, Nasi Lema. No, no, this is a completely different. This is a high nutritional and it is very, very, very helpful. You can, you need to, to know also what is the difference in the composition of the infant milk and the breast milk, uh, infant formula and the breast milk? You'll find, subhanAllah, many things here. The premature breast milk composition is different from the mature one, from the full term baby breast. Okay? And if you compare between the full term formula and the breast milk, you will find that the are, they are three trying to imitate the amount by really, the, but they cannot put the, the soul, which is very important. And you can find also that the osmolarity even in, in formula is 340 for the osmolarity in the breast milk is 275, which all this it will come to the kidney as ash, which is load over the kidney. So you must read what is the difference between protein, between fat, carbohydrate, uh, electrolytes. It is very important and you will find that breast milk is the best. Health benefit to all infant associated with breast feeding. You must know that there is short term and there is long term. You must tell the family that because many of them doesn't know. It will prevent acute otitis media and the gastroenteritis and the lower respiratory infection and the atopic dermatitis and the allergy and even SIDS. Okay, infant death syndrome, sudden infant death syndrome. Do you know that if the, if the baby has susceptibility to eczema and you give him exclusive breast field, the incidence will drop by 50%. Okay, and even if you tell anyone, do you know what is the long term benefit of breastfeeding? Your child will be high intelligence. The asthma is less, the obesity is less, the diabetes mellitus either type one or two is less, the childhood leukemia even less with the breastfeeding and the cardiovascular risk factor also less. 
Subhanallah. So why? Why you are go far from our even religion who said, وَالْوَالِدَاتُ يُرْدَعْنَ أَوْلَادَهُنَّ حَوْلَيْنِ كَامِلَيْنِ And even the Prophet said, if there is some conflict, who will feed the baby? He said, وَإِنْ تَعَصَطْنُ فَسَتُرْدِعُ لَهُ أُخْرَى It means, if the mother cannot feed for any reason, you must bring him another human to feed him, not another animal. Okay? This is a very important to keen for that. That's why, alhamdulillah, we have here in our area the human milk bank. There is also special advantages of the breast milk, which is the anti-inflammatory effect, anti-infective effect. It's oligosaccharides, which can affect and prevent infection. All this is very important. Anti-infective properties of the breast milk, okay? So have antibodies, which is humoral immunity against the virus bacteria. Okay, very important to support the respiratory mucosa. It is very important even it has anti-staph factor, which are very important. Okay, anti protozoal receptor. Okay. Analogs, very important, this oligosaccharide, which will help for that. Anti-inflammatory against a lot. Okay, the bifidus factor, which is present, it will help to tolerate and gross. And low buffering factor in the milk. What about cellular immunity in the breast milk? What about interferon inside? Immune modulating agents. All this is in the breast milk. It is the, the thing which is made by Allah, the Khalaq. Okay? And after that, in spite of that, the people, Alhamdulillah, Malaysia are, have a good rate of breastfeeding, but many countries, especially these developed countries and the rich one, is still very lagging for that. Okay? Uh, so if we need to to feed the baby, it is better to see the mother. If not, we can see a wet nurse. But to let anyone to give breastfeeding for a baby, we must do investigation to rule out infectious disease and like that. That's what you are doing for every milk donor in our area, okay? And we have breast uh, bank. It is not valid in many areas, valid here, alhamdulillah. Artificial feeding, which we said uh, powdered milk, or can be mixed, which is either complementary or supplementary. What is the difference, complementary or supplementary feeding? I mean, this to be complementary is the best. If the baby, have, if the mother has amount of breast milk, you say that the baby need in every feed uh, 75 ml. Okay, or 93 ounces. The, the mother can express only two ounces. So I need one extra formula. So we insist to give the baby first the breast feed, which is about two ounces, and then give him one extra formula. Why? Two things which can deceive the baby. The first thing, the artificial nibble, which you are giving, okay, it contains single wide bore for the milk to pass. But the nibble of the mother contains about 20 bore. So for the baby, Allah make this for the baby to try to suck from the nibble. This is, looks like exercise for him. And he is making the effort to go to this milk. But if he suck through the artificial dummy, he will just suck, it will all the milk came. So the flow is more comfortable for the baby. And the most of this formula also are tasty. Sugar, like syrup, which we used to add for everything. Okay? So at the end, the baby doesn't know. The baby this time, the mother giving him the breast, he need to suck and suck and suck to get a small amount of milk, which is not sweetie. 
okay, and do not free flow. Next time when uh, given the formula, it's very happy, just short time he can finish everything and go to it switchy and like that. So the baby, the mother will tell you, oh, I don't know. All, the, all my babies like that, one month and then they are auto wind themselves. Yes, because they, you, you make fitna for them, give them something which is harmful, but you add sugar over it. No, it is not like that. So if the mother start every time by her breast and give the extra, which is a complementary, maybe the baby, okay? Uh, this also, subhanallah, how is the how is the milk will come from the maternal reflexes, okay, uh, and also for the milk to be ejected. It is a creature. It is not just a simple thing, okay. And on all on all of this, okay, the maternal anxiety and stress and the fatigue can inhibit the ejection reflex. So it is very important the mother to give a good breastfeeding, she need to be mentally quiet. We have also from the baby many reflexes, which is rooting, sucking, swallowing, you know all this as a part of neonatal reflex. And here, okay, the breast milk preparation, how many hormones are working, and then how initiate the flow, and how is the maintenance of milk flow by either mechanical or uh, nutritional. All this needs the mother to be psychological state and the family support. Hormonal balance of the mother must be especially prolactin and the growth hormone and the sex hormone. Rooming, that's why we are making in our hospital, we have rooming in, we have one room, any mother will come if your baby is admitted and they come and they give every time, we will drop the baby to you every two or three hours according to the schedule to feed your baby. And it is looks uh, very cheap or without cost. So it is very important to the mother to have rooming inside the baby, not to tell her go home. And after one week or when the baby is okay, come back, she will lose her breastfeeding. Most of the baby in demand and some are preferred to adjust by timing here. Uh, we are not preferring it to give bottle supplementation. I mean, artificial nibble, because also it will make uh, uh, the baby will be a bit un misunderstanding, which is the best. So to prevent this confusion, we are not either giving the baby by cup or by searing. And your baby, alhamdulillah, are very quiet and they accept it. Okay, so we are not prepared to give artificial nibble, unless the baby has some cleft palate like that or cleft lip. So we, we can go for a special nibble. This is the comparison between the colostrum and the maternal milk. Really, if we stay to speak for one conference about the breast milk composition, it is not enough. But I'm just trying to give you just simple hint. This is the a difference between the colostrum and the mature milk. This colostrum are very, 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 very important, okay? Because it has increased nutrition. It is protective as the, the lower uh, square, protective because it is in, it increases increase, uh, IgA and the polymorphic nuclear and the monocyte and initiate gastric, gastrochoric reflux with mild laxative, okay? So it is very important to teach the mother the first two days, which is contain a very few amount of milk known as colostrum are very important. Even I used to tell them uh, all the diseases which you got and your body make immunity against, it will go to your baby. That's why even with the immunization, if you found if the mother, if the baby is breastfeeding, you can just wait for a month like that for the measles. If not, you need to give it earlier, like that. 
Okay, so it is very important. Uh, here is the animal milk. Okay, the cow, buffalo, like that. You need to go through it. And this is the difference between the human and cow milk, which is uh, the one used for the formula. Still, inshallah, maybe your time will come to say if there are any extra benefit or extra good effect of the breast milk. Okay. It is convenient composition for the premature. High content of oleic acid, which reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. Really? We are not joking. This is scientific research. We are trusting in our Islam. But this is not just by one who said, I am trusting. No, I am reading now what the others came. This can protect from the cardiovascular. I mean, it is because someone cannot understand, even suppose if someone has susceptibility to cardiovascular disease, it will decrease by like 50% if you give it. We don't know his original risk factor. But it is very important to, to teach the, the community about that, OK? Uh, enzymes, a lot of enzyme, digestive enzyme and the transport enzymes, bioactivity. Bioactivity are very, very important. SubhanAllah. Do you know that the iron, iron inside the breast milk is one. Inside the formula is 10. But the bioactivity of this one is better than that 10. How is the body can deal with it? It is not the amount. It is not how is it natural and the, can, the, body, the body can do benefit of that. Is there any contraindication for breast milk? Yes. Okay. There is temporal. If the mother has fissuring, many cases it come to us, the baby is vomiting blood. So if you are not know about new nature, oh, bring again, please go for coagulation profile and check what is going and the patient has. Maybe the first question ask the mother, mom, do you have any difficulty in breastfeed? She said, yes, I have crack, crack in the nipple. So if there is crack and the baby is sucking and especially if he is strong, he will suck until blood come and then he vomit. So sometimes if there, if there is, in crack nibble, if there is acute mastitis or abscess, or like acute disease like typhoid or other postpartum illness, like the mother is in ICU or like that, herpes simplex at the nibble also are very dangerous to give it to the baby, or mother receiving some drugs like uh, immune suppressor like that. There is permanent, yes. The mother have debilitating chronic disease, like uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, decompensated heart, like that. Malignancy, okay, active maternal cytomegalovirus infection, or local cause in the breast, like TB or cancer, or like that. Okay, so that's why we are not saying we can go now for the other. If there is another weight mother can give, or we are going to formula. Uh, the mother can lactate with precaution in case of syphilis and tuberculosis if the mother received the anti tuberculous drug, of course, and negative like that. Uh, maternal viral hepatitis, okay. Some said it can be give with process, okay. HIV infection, uh, this is a, a bit. Uh, wondering, uh, they said in developed country, stop the breastfeeding. Okay? Because there is a small susceptibility, maybe up to 2% like that. But in developing countries, like many of known countries, continue breastfeeding. Why? Be, be, they said it cannot be secure, the formula which is not available. So let him 2% good AIDS 
to be all of the will of us. Okay, so it is depend on how strong are your community, how strong is your uh, finance like that. But if you can available formula, please go for formula. Don't allow the mother which HIV positive to feed her baby. Okay, psychological patient, if under control, can lactate. Infant cause also can be related to the infant, especially if the patient has uh, respiratory distress. You are afraid if they give the baby with respiratory distress to suck the breast milk, he will choke because it has uh, respiratory rate are very high. Very low birth weight also cannot tolerate breast, film, uh, breast milk directly. Okay, but there is permanent like if the patient has severe milk allergy, lactose intolerance, galactosemia is the one of the most important diagnosis. It is autosomal uh, recessive disease, which is a baby need to be fed of lactose and the galactose free formula. So he has a special galactosemia of, uh, form. Okay. Of course, also phenyl ketonuria. These two diseases are very common before. Now, Alhamdulillah, after we have this formula, uh, especially uh, phenylketonuria, which can cause severe mental retardation and the hair will be yellow and the eye will be blue, but without brain, like a lot in the world now. So it is very important, okay? If you are going to feed the baby by artificial formula, you must decide the type. Okay, is it fresh fluid animal, which is not used now, okay, not refused, but which powder? We have a lot of, of many powder, okay, like S26, like Simulac, like what, 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 what. So you are going to choose and you must know how is the cost of everyone. And is there any, uh, determine the formula because every milk company now she is doing like a special formula. A special formula, I mean, by special formula, uh, there is like Similac HA. HA means a hypoallergenic formula. If the baby has like asthma or eczema like that, it may be healed form. There is one for anti-diarrhea. There is one for anti-motility, which is for constipation, like that. So they are doing a lot of special formula for that. Then you are going to check how much is the amount needed by the child, okay? Amount of milk, they said in age in day, multiply by 10, age in week, multiply by 10 plus 70, or age in week, uh, in month, multiply by 10 plus 100, okay? This is maybe a help you, but originally you are going to calculate that the baby needs 150 ml in the first uh, four months, okay? What is the difference between the formula and the breast? The breast milk contain about 67 kilocalorie per 100 ml, okay? The formula may be slightly increased. It may be around 80 or 81. How we are dividing this one, okay? Uh, for how many hours? Every three hours like that. If the baby became slightly elder, you can make it every four hours. So it depends. Uh, if, you, if the patient need to prepare uh, the milk, you must teach her how to prepare that milk. Okay, I think we can uh, give you an example after that, inshallah. If the patient cannot tolerate oral, so you must go for total parenteral nutrition. Total parenteral nutrition, it is the same which we speak before. We need fat, uh, we need glucose, fat, protein, electrolyte, and elements, okay? You must put all this one. So, uh, inshallah, I am preparing to put one for you. So you must calculate for the baby how much you need from protein, from dextrose, from lipids. 
and then you are going to calculate how much you need from sodium, potassium, chloride, uh, calcium, phospho phosphate, all this, and even you are going to add some trace element and the multivitamin. So uh, TBN is a complete balanced diet, but it will go through the IV line, okay? So the indication of it is support the growth from birth in premature, okay? Or poor gut motility. We have many baby, the gut motility are not normal, so we need to be patient until it improves. If the patient has ileus or sepsis, if the patient got NEC, sometimes you need to make him NBM for one week. A very operative, if the patient is going for operation, you must make him NBM. Okay, if a good chylothorax uh, or short gut syndrome. So it is very important to know the indication for that. The calculation, typically based on the birth weight, okay, must account how much is the total. I need to give him like 150 ml per kilo or how much the total, BD, uh, the total calories which I am giving to him, how much is the dextrose, how much is the protein the lipid and the electrolyte, trace element, minerals, and vitamin. So as you can see now, it is, I used to tell the family, it is a complete diet, but given through the IV line. Uh, the fin, which I mean, uh, fluid and the electrolyte management, okay? It's very important, as we speak before, to manage or to maintain both intra and the extra cellular fluid and allow diuresis in the first week of life. As I told you, baby are edematous and he lost weight. Maintain appropriate electrolyte and they provide adequate nutrition. So many babies may, if you suspect they will be okay, but at the start he has like high lactate, he cannot tolerate feeding at the start, we can give him just IV fluid. Okay, how much we are giving the per day? If the baby just delivered, okay, his birth weight is less than 1.25, we are giving him 70 to 80 ml per kilo per day. So if the baby is one ml, he needs all over the day 70, 75, 80 like that. Okay, if up to 17, 50, okay, he needs from 60 to 80. More than this, you need 60 ml per kilo. If there is birth asphyxia, some said you need to restrict the fluid more to be 40, and some said no, go for the 60 and the monitoring. If he is edematous, you can decrease. Okay. Increase the daily, we will speak about that. Every day you are increasing according to the input output chart and the weight of the child, urine output, urea electrolytes, which are very important. Daily nutritional requirement per kilo for a stable, growing, preterm baby after initial postnatal diuresis. He needs the protein 3 or 3.5 like that. He needs the energy from 110 to 120 kilocalories per kilo. The carbohydrate also about three. Sometimes we need to increase more up to 11 because many of them, as we said, they got hypoglycemia. The fat, we are using 20% up to three. The sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphate, all this must be added inside the fluid. Okay. Fluid issue, if the patient has the coming diseases, it is better to restrict the fluid, maybe 80% or 70%. If severe RDS, if bronchopulmonary dysplasia, if has BDA, if has hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, some said if you restrict the fluid, it is better. Okay, it is the same like case of syndrome if inappropriate hormone excretion. Okay, common fluid problem is patient can get either hypo or hypervolemia, okay, oliguria, okay, or bolioria. Remember that the baby must pass at least one ml per kilogram per hour. 
of urine. Don't forget this number. The baby needs to pass one ml per kilogram per hour. Otherwise, we are afraid that his kidney may be under pre-renal impairments. In the first 24 hour, we are not giving many electrolyte. We are giving just D10, some adding calcium, but it is not a routine from the 24 hour and above. According to the patient passes urine, we must add sodium and potassium. At first week after that, we are giving the maintenance sodium, potassium, and other. Extreme pre term with metabolic acidosis. Okay, he may benefit from sodium acetate. And if you are going to give TBN, you must repeat frequently the blood urea and serum electrolyte, calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Okay, remember that this electrolyte, either sodium, hypo or hyper, potassium, hypo or hyper, calcium, and magnesium. All of these are very dangerous and they can affect the baby. Okay, we have one baby who has hypocalcemia who got convulsion like did the same can happen with sodium arrhythmia. So you must take care about that, please. Okay. How much I am giving the baby if admitted to me in the SCN or in the ICU? If a full term, we are giving him 60 ml per kilo per day in the first day. Okay, so first day I will give 60, second day 90, third day 120, fourth day it will be 150. We are just trying to imitate the normal flow of the milk. Okay, lower rate increase in the preterm, you can increase it slightly allocation, okay, which are very important. Total parental and nutrition, we are using the same but we are assessing the input, output, chart, urine output, and, the, and how much he go to him. Uh, the preterm, as I told you, he lost a lot of sodium, so sometimes he may need four, five, six uh, through the TBN and frequently measure the blood urea and the serum electrolytes. Interal feeding for the new need, okay, should be introduced as soon as possible. Because if you lift the baby for more than two hours, he will start to get hypoglycemia. And the definition of hypoglycemia is less than 2.6 millimole. If you got, sometimes he will get convulsion and he got bad effect. So you must interal feeding as soon as you can. That's why even we are asking now for the baby during delivery just to be skin, skin contact with the mother. It will help for the milk to come and the baby to be satisfied. Breast milk is the best choice for all, for all of us. Okay. If not, we must ask ourselves what is the, how can we feed the baby as we speak before. He need a wet mother, he need pre-term formula, he need a special formula or whatever we need. This is the breast milk, which is the preferred one. Breast milk you can put inside the fridge and you can melt it and use the once melted, don't re, uh, freeze it again, please. okay? What is the human milk for to fire? This is small sachets from SMA. Just if the patient, especially preterm, is in uh, uh, exclusive breastfeeding, we can add this one. Okay, so it is recommended to add the HFM to EBM express the breast milk baby if less than 32 weeker or less than 1500. Okay, it will give extra calorie, vitamin, calcium, and phosphate. Okay, usually we can give it if the baby can tolerate more than 100 ml uh, per kilo per day milk, even if we are giving him extra fluid, no issue, but at least 100. Start at a concentration of one sachet to 50 ml EBM, and if this is tolerated for 48 hours, increase one 
in 25 ml and to check the dilution. Okay, it is very important really and it helps most of our preterm to catch you. So this is the, the rest milk for the fire. Uh, infant formula, we speak about the, the preterm, the, the other one, and this is the special. Special formula, we must know that lactose uh, intolerance or galactosemia, we have soya varieties. For feeding intolerance, we have like similar sensitive or neocate, semi-elemental nitrogen or bridged meal, elemental one, which is neocate for a case of milk intolerance. Okay, the renal disease, we have special similar BM for renal failure babies. Uh, for kinothorax, also we have infaporins. So this one are very important. And sometimes it is very difficult to go to it. And you must know which center are you using. As you speak about uh, the either direct sucking or orogastric uh, root if we need to cup or sealing. How much to increase? Again, we, we said 60, 90, 120, and then 150, and to continue like that. Uh, if, if you have one baby which is IUGR with end diastolic flow, okay, or abnormal Doppler, it is better uh, to rush because he has susceptibility to good NEC, and you must give him only EBM. Maximum volume, we can we open because we find some mother has a lot of milk. No, we usually we prefer for the unit up to. 180. Some said we can come up to 200, but usually for term we are using 150. For the pre term, we can use uh, 180, maximum 200 to allow. But the most important to go to the daily recommended weight. Okay. Vitamin and mineral supplementation for pre term baby. If he is uh, got a full feeding, we can give him. Uh, vitamin like folic acid and the multivitamin and the iron can be given within 28 days unless indicated before that. This is from our pediatric protocol. Your pediatric protocol is, is a very good and very important book, please. You must re revise it. Okay, we speak frankly about the indication of the uh, TBN, okay? And what is the composition? And what is our goal? How many kilocalories do we need? How much dextrose are using 10%? How much protein? How much lipid? okay? Uh, and to make sure that the baby give enough glucose, okay? And to start the TBN within the first 24 hours. Don't to be said, let us see after three days. If you start early, the growth is completed early, and this is the best even for extreme breeder. And they speak about lipids, okay, which added to the TBN, and before there was a matter of discussion, it is dangerous, it can cause uh, increased sepsis like that, and they recommend now you can start it. Don't be so panic from leaving, giving the lipid, because lipid, as you know, is the best source of energy. Is there any complication for, from TBN? Yes. And this is a very important. If you are using any, any, any medication, you must know its side effectiveness. Even I used it to say the first medication for us is the oxygen, which is easy. Any patient has is very stress, I will give him oxygen. Even oxygen can cause side effect in preterm baby. Anyone knows what can it cause? Increase oxygen. Yes, look, man. If I'm mistaken, oxygen toxicity. Yes, oxygen toxicity. It will cause uh, free radical. Okay, good. So now you, you are still remembering the basic science, good. But we can find the affection for the eye, retinopathy premature. We can find the chronic lung disease, 
all of this is due to uh, unbalanced use of oxygen, okay? For the TBM, possible sepsis. That's why we are making you now all TBM is central. We cannot prepare any TBM, it is only in the IV room, okay? Uh, if the catheter is malposition or extra position, take care about that. But the most important, uh, it can cause some thrombosis also, this one. Okay, if you give fluid imbalance, you give extra fluid or less fluid, you give extra dextrose, he will be hyperglycemia, we will give less. So it is very important to adjust all this, okay? Which, uh, but a known side effect is the cholestatic jaundice. It is very common with the TBN, and fortunately, when we taper the TBN, it will improve. How do, to do monitoring? We need to do every day at the start, all set of investigation for uh, full blood and uh, blood glucose and the liver function test and the kidney function test to adjust the dose of TBN. And unless the baby became stable, we can do it like twice weekly. So TBN are a very important, okay? Sometimes you must be very cautious if you are going to transition from bare uh, gastrostin gastrist tube to bare oral, okay? Or if you are giving uh, through rile the tube and you need to start now direct feeding, okay? So make sure that the baby got acceptable weight and he is stable and the developmental are okay and the occupational therapy to make sure that he can suck, swallow and coordinate it, okay? And start, please, be soft to touch if you are doing with new needs. Don't be harsh, okay? Slowly, slowly. This is uh, some questions. I think time now may be not enough for you. This is the uh, human milk for the fire, which are very important. This is the myotin, which contain protein and the fat, and also some of boys are using it for uh, to be muscular but uh, it can help the infants to catch weight, uh, but we must measure the kidney function test and the electrolyte because it, uh, it can affect the urea. Uh, this sodium abnormalities, potassium, calcium, magnesium. Okay, I think uh, this may be uh, enough for you this, uh, this lunch time. <laughs> speaking about feeding, okay? Uh, but just remember my important point, uh, we need to be gradual introducing the nutrition. Uh, the breast milk is the best. If our, it is not available, we will search for with another woman. If not, we can go for the uh, formula. Uh, take care that every age, has its own requirements, and a good bulk of this requirement is needed for growth. So if you restrict the amount like 70%, it may be the baby will not get enough growth. So please take care about the requirement and to make sure you are able to measure the baby regularly and to check his urea electrolyte. And don't hesitate if you feel that the baby cannot start feeding to start either IV fluid or if it is prolonged like extreme preterm or like that, you can go for total parenteral nutrition. And do forget that the only one who is not fit is Allah. It means he all needs to eat. Only Allah is not to eat. Even this cats and the animal, even this bear, this, even this uh, plant, all need nutrition. But the best for the human, 
in the breastfeeding. Just come to the lecture and read the importance of breastfeed and try to be ready to counsel the family if she said, I am rich enough to bring a formula. I need to give myself uh, off from breastfeeding. Is it okay? And you must be able to convince. Okay? Now it's your turn to speak and ask any questions if needed. Uh, doctor, I have a question about the fluid replacement just now. So basically, uh, how do we estimate the insensible water loss? Is it uh, affected by body weight or other factor that we need to consider? Yes, really, uh, some, sometimes we can uh, questionnaire ourselves according to the results. Okay, I mean, if the baby is not gaining weight, so we must ask how much is the humidity, how much is the cold atmosphere he exposed. Okay, because uh, some, some families are let the baby in very hot atmosphere and they are wrapping him, wrapping and wrapping and put him in very, and then they will come to the emergency treatment and they said, oh, my baby has fever. And really the doctor open and the measure the temperature, yeah, it is 38.5, which is very high. But once he open and give feeding, the temperature will drop. This is an, an example of one disease known in neonate known as dehydration fever. Over rubbing, it will cause the baby to lose a lot of fluid and good dehydration fever. And just sometimes you need to teach the family and give them knowledge. And don't be hurry to treat at the time, especially if you open all these closes and you found the baby after that, just to give him some drink, he will say, okay, and no more fever. Yes, you can follow up the baby, but don't rush to treat as infection. This is an example. Another example, if the baby is left in cold atmosphere also, insensible water loss, that's why extreme belly term, we are putting him in incubator, which is double wall. Term one, we can put him in incubator, which is single wall. Okay, the baby are completely stable, we must, we can put him in a cot, but we must put him in complete closes and the blankets to protect. But as I told you, the input output, including the uh, urine output, including the gaining weight, vital signs, all this will guide you because it is insensible. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yeah, we will come. Any other question? Amy? You didn't need to ask? No, Dr. Hmm. Ashraf? Uh, no, Dr. Okay, hoping inshallah the best for all of you. Be ready inshallah for end of block and the uh, final bro soon inshallah. We think it to see you coming to help us inshallah. Okay, salam alaikum warahmatullah. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.